Hey y'all, my name's Tyson, and this time around, let's turn the tables on tables in layout. Tables in layout are one of those things that um, you may not have tried, but they're essentially spreadsheets. And uh, as a way to display information, that's a format that many of us are, are familiar with. And so they can be pretty useful. There's a lot of ways that we can edit them in layout and also import and use them in kind of some interesting ways. So let's take a dive into tables in layout. So let's just start with the basics. Let me get rid of my table here and let's draw a new table. Now, when you draw a table, don't worry about this starting graphic. Just sort of create how many rows and columns you need, and then from there you can stretch this out. And it's not that important to get this right from the start because as we'll see, we can edit this later on. But when you do create a table, just so you know, you can double click, and create the same table other times. Now, another thing to know, again, just if you want to be very accurate from the start, as I'm drawing this out, if we look down here, if we type in, in the correct format, so I can see I have five C, five columns, and six R, six rows, maybe I need 10 C comma five R, or 10 columns, five rows, hit enter, and then I can stretch this out to match something else on my page. So easy to initially create tables uh, even accurately. Now, let's talk about editing tables. And let's think about this at sort of three levels. We can edit the entire table. And if I go to our shape style, I could do things like, uh, you know what, let's take and make all of the lines thicker. Or we could change the color of the entire table. Now, if I wanted to go in and say, that's fine, but actually I want these inside lines thinner, if I click and drag a selection, when you drag a selection, it's going to select the dividing line. So if I drag this selection inside here, I could turn these lines back to something thinner, change their color if I wanted. And I could continue to edit that. Instead of dragging a selection, if I select a cell, and again, I'm inside, so I've double clicked, and now I'm selecting, and I can hold the shift key down to select a series of cells, I could change just those. So when you think of editing your tables, consider again that you can edit the table as a whole, or you can double click to get inside and drag a selection window to select multiple dividing lines or you can select individual cells or hold modifier keys to select multiple cells. Now, while we're in here, you will have noticed that we can actually start to change some of the lines. So if we wanted to condense some of these and start to format our table in a more interesting way, we can do so. Another thing we could do in here is if I want to say have a solid dividing line, I could select this cell, hold the shift key, select all these cells and then right click and say merge those. And now that has merged into a single cell. I could merge these for example, but let's just say I accidentally merged too many. I can right click, simply unmerge, and then redo that.
And if I want to take these cells and let's return those back. Now, once you're done um, formatting some of this, you may say, oh yeah, we, I need to add a few more rows or columns. That's easy to do as well. We're simply gonna double click into here and we could click in any space and say, insert a row above, below, or a column left or right. So if I add another column here and do that, and if I wanna add multiple columns, it's like other spreadsheet programs. I can select multiple, and then let's say, actually let's put in some rows. So let's say add three rows below. So give it a try, format, this table in um, different ways. And you have a lot of control over how these tables are going to look. Um, now, let's talk about, uh, again, it, obviously these cells aren't useful if we're not putting information into them. When you go in to start adding information, like before, we could edit cells at an individual letter level, or we can edit uh, everything at once. So if I select everything, go up to my text, then I could change the text of everything in my table. Or I could go in and simply say, I need to actually, I want to change just a series of cells. This is also where you will find things like whether you're uh, weighted to the left, the right, the center, So edit your text as you'd expect. Now let's look at another example of what you can do with these tables. One of the common questions that we see is people asking, well, hey, I'd like to have a table that would uh, update and indicate my sheet, uh, the number of sheets I have in my document set. Well, let's look at the scrapbooks and we've actually built some that you can just bring in. If we look at any of the scrapbooks of contemporary, elegant, plain, etc. One of the options is sheet index. So we'll just bring the sheet index in. And this is interesting. Look at my pages, basic sheet, CSV, Excel. If I keep adding more pages, let me take those and move those down. When I come back to my sheet index, it has those here. And of course I could rename any of these. And when I look at my sheet index, it's updated. The way this is working is this is simply auto text inserted into the cells. If I double click on any one of these, select this cell, double click into it, you can see it's just auto text, as is this. And that's good to remember because if we wanted more sheets than the, say the 15 we have, well, we could insert, uh, but we may need to update that auto text. So I'm gonna grab my auto text here, copy it, paste and then quickly modify and simply say that one's sheet 16, that one's sheet 17 and so forth. And then I do the same over here. So you can insert auto text into uh, your cells in tables and that can create some interesting relationships here. Now you can also 
import spreadsheets into layout as tables. Let's have a look. There's two formats you can use. CSV, uh, which is generic spreadsheet format, and XLX, XLSX, which is the Excel format. Here, let's import a basic CSV file. And I can actually just drag this in because it's going to work the same. So I've got a couple uh, files here, CSV and Excel format. So if I grab this simple Gantt chart, which I exported from Google Docs, you drag it in and you can see it comes in with all of the information that was part of that. Now it doesn't come in with the formatting, but it does have the information here and we could continue from there. Let me delete this and show one other way that we could import CSV files. So I'm going to copy our, our simple table here, go back to CSV import and paste it. And I'm going to come in, let me shrink this up a little bit and come in and add a few more, oops, add a few more rows. I'm going to drop some CSV information directly into this table. Now, I suggest that you um, have a little bit of knowledge of what you're going to put in here because it's easier to format this now than after you put the information in. But for example, I could right click on this cell and say insert table data. And it's going to ask me what do you want to put in here? It's looking for a CSV file. So this is a simple CSV file exported from SketchUp. Remember that you can generate reports from SketchUp of various data. And that's what I've done here. And this has just the number of components. So if I open this, it's going to bring that information in. Now, as I mentioned, there's actually more information here than, uh, than rows that I had created. And at this point, I could say, oh, well, I'll just create a few more rows. But now I need to figure out how to put that information and get it back in here. So I, I suggest that if you know what you're going to bring in, go ahead and format your table accordingly ahead of time, and it'll make it simpler. But it, this is a great way to create basically table templates or to save a table as a scrapbook and then just to insert common information exported from SketchUp or other places directly in. Now, if you want to maintain some of the formatting, let's have a look at importing insert. So I've got this Excel file. And again, I just, I just grabbed the generic Kent chart template from Google Docs. And take a note of it is called Gantt chart template. And I've got another one here that's the same file, but I've just changed a few colors and the name. But let's import this one. It's called Gantt chart main. Open it. And this is going to actually ask us which sheet. Now, there's only one that I have on here, but we could change this if we had multiple sheets and things like formatting. So this looks uh, a little more like the original. One of the things to know about this is this is a reference to that Excel file. So if I went to uh, my Excel files here, and let's say I updated this spreadsheet. So I've already got it embedded in my docs, but now I've updated some information on it and I export it back out. So in this case, what I'm going to do is change the name. So this is yeah, chart main. I'm just going to change that to old and change this new version to the same name I had. 
as if I was exporting it out. So this new version now has the name. When I come in here, if I right click and say update the table reference, it's a live reference. And now it thinks that same file has been updated and a couple of things have changed. So keep that in mind too. You can update your external reference, your external Excel file, and still uh, just update it here. One more thing just to know about formatting. When you have uh, a really large table here, you may have areas where you need to break it into multiple tables. You can do this on the tables you create, but you can also come in and I'm gonna say, you know what, I need to right click and split the table after row 19. I may wanna split this up from one more up, but let's have a look. And it splits this. In fact, let me undo that. I think in this case, it would be better if I split it here. This makes more sense. And now I've got two tables that I can put in different parts as needed. I think that's everything. <laughs> How was that for a whirlwind of um, table tables and learning about tables and layout? It is a, if you use that type of information and like displaying it in that way, uh, hopefully this gives you some ideas of what you can do with tables. I, again, I think they're not as well known as they could be. And hopefully now you know you have a lot of options in editing uh, how they look, the format, and options in importing uh, and working with data even outside of layout. So hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully it gave you some ideas. And if there are other things, other questions you have that you'd like us to cover in these skill builders, please let us know in the comments and please let us know what you thought of this or how even we might improve tables in the future. We'd love to hear your ideas and carry on the conversation. As always, please do like, please subscribe to our channel if you haven't. Thanks y'all, we'll see you next time.